Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, and I will share my screen now. So, so is my screen visible? Yes, uh, yeah, it is visible. One screen more. Okay, yeah. Okay, so I'll be talking about community screening of diabetic retinopathy using smartphone-based offline artificial intelligence. I have no financial disclosure. Uh, the aim of the study was to validate the use of offline artificial intelligence for community screening of diabetic retinopathy. Uh, this was a cross-sectional study conducted from August 2018 to September 2019. Diabetics over the age of 40 years visiting the dispensaries administered by the Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai were included. Written informed consent was taken from all the patients and preliminary data such as age, sex, duration since diabetes onset and postprandial blood glucose levels were collected. The fundus imaging was done by healthcare workers who had minimal experience in fundus imaging. The health workers were trained for a period of two weeks to take both dilated and undilated fundus images. Training was also done on how to run the AI and document the results. Images were captured using the Remedio non-midriatic fundus on phone camera. Three fields of the fundus were captured according to the ETDRS protocol, which were the posterior pole, including the disc and the macula, and the nasal and the temporal field, which gave an approximately 60 degree view of the retina. The grading by AI uh, of the offline algorithm marked images of poor quality, prompting the operator to take additional pictures of the same retina view. The AI algorithm was run offline on the smartphone by the operator immediately after image acquisition. The offline automated analysis graded these images as referable DR and non-referable DR. So moderate or severe NPDR and PDR cases were included in the referable DR, whereas no diabetic retinopathy or cases of mild NPDR were included in non-referable DR. Class activation mapping showed the lesions uh, of the images taken. This is how the class activation mapping would look like, where the lesions were picked up by the AI were shown in the blue. The images were graded by two vitro retinal surgeons who were masked through the AI grading results. In case of discrepancy between the grading of two surgeons, an adjudication was done by a third vitro retinal surgeon. The grading of retinopathy was done according to the ICDR severity scale. And the final diagnosis for each patient was determined by the stage of DR of the more affected eye. A total of 1378 patients were enrolled in the study. Uh, of these, 84 patients had uncredible images in one or both eyes and were excluded from the study. The mean duration of diabetes uh, was 5.8 years with an average postprandial blood glucose level of 208 milligram per deciliter. Uh, this is the uh, uh, table showing the grading by the ophthalmologist versus by the media's artificial intelligence. So 81 patients uh, labeled by the ophthalmologist as no DR were incorrectly diagnosed by the AI as a referable DR. Among total of 70 individuals who were diagnosed as mild NPDR, 55 patients were diagnosed by the uh, as having RDR by the AI, whereas uh, 15 patients were correctly diagnosed. And all patients who were diagnosed as RDR by the specialist grading were all correctly diagnosed by the AI. So this gives us a sensitivity and specificity of diagnosing RDR was 100% and 89.5% respectively by the AI. And the same value for detecting any DR, which means it also included mild NPDR, the sensitivity was 89% and specificity was 94.43% with no false negative results. The robustness of the AI algorithm in detecting cases of DR can be evaluated best in diverse clinical or population-based settings. With Mumbai having a population of around 2 crores and people of various ethnicities living here, the current scenario was an ideal situation to assess the robustness of the AI. The sensitivity and specificity for detecting RDR was 100% and 89.5%. This was far above the superiority endpoint of sensitivity of 85 and specificity of 82.5% deemed by the FDA. There was no false negative in the study with the negative predictive value being 100%. No false negative would mean absolutely no chances of missing a referable condition, making this algorithm good for community screening. The number of false positive cases were 158, of which 55 cases were that of mild NPDR, 22 cases were of pathologies other than DR, and 59 cases were normalized. Pathologies other than DR, which were detected by the AI, were BRBO, asteroids, macular scar, glaucoma, gliosis, AMD, 
macular hole and retinitis pigmentosa. So this is how the AI picked up the asteroids and the uh, cases of drusens. So to conclude, the study was a community-based study for screening of referable diabetic retinopathy. The images were captured on a smartphone-based fundus camera by health workers with minimal experience in imaging. Thus, not all images were of excellent quality. This would be expected while conducting large-scale community screening. Despite including poor quality images, the sensitivity and specificity of detecting RDR by the AI was 100% and 89.5%, making it an ideal tool for community screening. Being an offline AI algorithm, the real-time analysis of images brings another novel edge to the study, emphasizing its applicability in remote areas, where despite limited access to internet, results can be given immediately to the patient. The lesion detection map on the images would also help the health worker in patient education. Thank you. Uh, excellent presentation, Dr. Aska. Uh, uh, what, uh, 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 what AI software were you using? Was it a proprietary thing or did uh, you and your center uh, design it or what was it? Can you tell us? Oh, so it is a Medios AI. It's uh, it's it's not designed by us. It's the Medios AI, which uh, comes with the Remedio smartphone camera. They have a uh, AI uh, which we had taken from them and we had used it. It's a proprietary of the Remedio group. Okay. And did you uh, do any analysis of the subgroup where uh, the uh, poor quality images were there? Was there any analysis of that subgroup? Yes, sir. So Yes, sir. in our in our pilot study, we had uh, we had done that wherein we had around two fifty patients, and we had uh, sub analyzed where we had included the poor quality images, and then excluded the poor quality. So even even after including the poor quality images, the sensitivity was uh, 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 was more than ninety percent, sir. No, 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 no. What I meant is amongst just the poor quality images. I know that uh, when the poor quality was included in the whole sub, uh, whole group, uh, you got that sensitivity. But amongst the poor quality images, did you uh, again analyze that subset of patients or that was not separately done? So, so uh, we, we, we had uh, whatever images we got uh, initially. Uh, so it, can I go ahead, sir? Yeah, this is a discussion time, I think. So uh, you can come. Okay. So, so each image, as I said, that around six images, uh, three fields and one anterior segment photo was taken for each eye. But when sometimes the image was of not good quality, the the uh, the health worker was taking it took multiple images. So say one patient instead of three images had six images or seven images because of poor quality image. So we did one analysis where we included all these six or seven images, whereas in another analysis, we included only those three images which were of good quality or average quality, not of bad quality. Okay, and fine. then we did the analysis, even in when we included all the images, which also included the poor quality images, we had a sensitivity which was above 90%. That's okay. That's okay. Thank you.